Good morning and welcome to this morning's online worship service with Littleton Methodist Church. We are glad that you have joined us and do pray that we may experience God's presence together. A couple of notices that I need to share as we start. As much as we have our online worship services, we are worshipping in the church sanctuary on Sunday mornings. And so please know that all four worship services are available for you to come and join us on a Sunday morning. That's the 7.45 traditional worship service, the 9.30 contemporary worship service and Sunday school, our 11 o'clock vernacular service, and then the 6 p.m. evening service. If you are at high risk or have comorbidities, we encourage you to stay at home and enjoy the online worship services. On the 8th of November, we are planning one combined morning worship service to celebrate Remembrance Day. This service will start at 8.30 in the morning and we invite you to come along and join us. If you have medals of your father's or your own medals, you are most welcome to wear them on that day as we worship and celebrate Remembrance Day together. As a leadership, we have made the decision to postpone our annual society meeting to next year, 31 January. This gives us time to, to do a proper budget and receive all the figures needed to do our budget from our circuit as well as the Methodist Church of Southern Africa. I do need to say that on the 8th of November we will be handing out our annual report booklets from the different ministries as well as the financials of the church. And so please come and join us as we hand those booklets out. Um, if there are any queries, you are welcome to ask any of our leaders um, as we have worked through the booklet together. Thank you once again for faithfully giving to the work of God and supporting this church during this year, during COVID-19 and lockdown. We look forward to resuming fully when all people feel safe and are able to worship together in our sanctuary. God bless you. Our call to worship this morning comes from Psalm 2, reading from verse 7. That is Psalm 2, reading from verse 7. I will proclaim the decree of the Lord. He said to me, You are my son. Today I have become your father. Ask of me and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. You will rule them with an iron scepter and you will dash them to pieces like pottery. Therefore, you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry and you be destroyed in your way. For his wrath can flare up in a moment. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. Thanks be to God. For his word. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we gather as your people to worship you, to praise you, to acknowledge you as God Almighty, Father of all creation, Jesus, Lord and Saviour, Holy Spirit, guide and comfort. Lord, we acknowledge your presence within our lives. We acknowledge that you respond to our needs, that you meet us where we are, that you know us best. And so, Lord God, as you have revealed yourself as Father, as Son, and Holy Spirit to us, we ask that as we worship together today, as we hear your word spoken to us today, May we learn from your word. May we experience your touch. May you fill us with your presence. Bless us now as we worship together. We ask and pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. i 
in darkness tries to hide It trembles at his voice It trembles at his voice How great is our God Sing with me how great is our God And all we see how great How great is our God Age to age just
victorious, thy great name we praise. Our gospel reading this morning comes from John chapter 1, reading from verse 1 to 4, and then from 11 to 14. That's John chapter 1, reading from verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of men. In verse 11. He came to that which was His own, but His own did not receive Him. Yet to all who received Him, to those who believed in His name, He gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Just so far in God's Word. Thanks be to God for His Word. Let us enter a time of prayer, a time of confession, coming before the Lord our God as we ask for His mercy. Let us pray. Lord God, we live such busy lives. We live lives in which we fulfill different roles and different responsibilities. And sometimes we forget. Sometimes we become so busy that we neglect the things that are close and dear to us. Sometimes, Lord God, we even purposefully forget. Consciously making the decision not to hold on to our principles and our values and our morals. Maybe for a moment of gratification. And yet, Lord God, as we look and we reflect upon that, we know that it is wrong. We know that we have sinned. We know that we have backslidden. And so, Father God, loving Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, we come and we confess our sins to you. Acknowledging our brokenness, acknowledging our selfishness, acknowledging our greed, acknowledge our revengefulness. Lord, search our hearts and our minds. Bring to the front those things that have caused us pain. Bring to mind that which has broken relationship with you. Lord, we ask that you would bring that to mind. Convict us of that so that we may offer that to you. Father God, you love the, the world so much. You loved humanity so much. You loved each and every one of us so much that you sent your son Jesus Christ to be the sacrificial lamb, to die our death upon the cross. And so, Lord God, we say thank you. Thank you, Father, for loving us. Thank you, Jesus, for being obedient. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us and expressing your heart to us, for teaching us, for calling us, for equipping us, and calling us to obedience. Lord, that which is not of you, we offer to you. And we ask, Lord, that you would forgive us. Forgive us our transgressions. Forgive us our sins, our iniquities. Forgive us for those things that we have said and done, and even thought that are not of you. Lord, touch our hearts and our minds. Bring us to a place of healing and restoration. Come Holy Spirit, work in our hearts and in our minds. Come Holy Spirit and transform us from within that we may carry, that we may exhibit the image of Christ as disciples of Jesus. 
Help us, Holy Spirit, to become more and more like the God whom we serve. May we today know that we are forgiven. May we today take hold of our forgiveness and live our lives in such a way that we bring honor to Father God, honor to Jesus Christ and what He did for us upon the cross, and honor to the Holy Spirit that guides us and leads us. Bless us, Lord, as we aim and as we try to be Christ-like in our thoughts, in our words, and our deeds. We ask this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In God whom we trust. Amen. Today we continue with our discipleship journey and we look at the doctrine of God known as the Trinity. Today is going to err uh, more on the side of a teaching than a sermon. Consider reading The Simplicity of God, God as Trinity by John Sugget, S-U-G-G-I-T, 1993. The word Trinity is not mentioned in the Bible, however, that does not mean that the Trinity does not exist. In the Old Testament, the belief in a single God was called monotheism. All through the Old Testament, we read of one God, the God who created all and is all-powerful and all-knowing. In Deuteronomy 6 verse 4, this concept of one God is stated, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. All through the Old Testament, the prophets and priests stood in strong opposition to foreign gods of any other nation. Early in the first century, Christians found themselves in trouble because the movement found itself giving worship to Jesus. The church's experience of Jesus Christ's life was that God was so manifestly and uniquely revealed that Jesus could be called the Son of God and God. In acknowledging Jesus Christ as the revelation or disclosure of God himself, Christians called Jesus Son of God and recognized him as God. Jewish opponents accused him of abandoning monotheism, speaking only of God, the one God, father of Abraham and Isaac. After some time, much discussion, debate and consultation formulated the doctrine of the Trinity at the Council of Nicaea in 325 CE. This was to protect the monotheism of the Old Testament, but also define Jesus as God, as well as the Holy Spirit as God, the one and same God as the God of the Old Testament. What the doctrine of the Trinity does is preserve the unity of God while introducing us to the divinity of Christ and the way in which His work is made relevant to us through the Holy Spirit. We can understand the Trinity as the one God that is made known as Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Each is God, but each is a distinct person. From this doctrine, we can understand that the Creator God, the one who made all, the sovereign God, is still closely and wants to be intimately involved in that which God created. Not just creation, but humanity that is part of creation. The doctrine of the Trinity is a way of expressing the truth about God in relation to the world and humanity. We cannot define God. God is infinite, limitless. God is a mystery and all through scripture and history, God is revealing God's self to us. Just as God revealed God's love to us through God's own son, Jesus Christ. No one can really know God as stated in in John 1 verse 18. Verse 18 says this, No one has ever seen God, but God the one and only who is at the Father's side has made him known. Christians believe that through the life and death and even the resurrection of Jesus Christ, God has revealed God's self in such a way as to create a new everlasting relationship between God's self and humanity. The Christian understanding of God as Trinity describes both the sovereignty of God and the responsibility of human beings. God is sovereign, transcendent, and supreme. And on the other hand, God enters into a relationship with humanity, allowing God at the same time to be vulnerable to possible rejection. 
we know that rejection happened. The eminence of God is described as God with us, God involved, God not distant but close and intimate, which is actually opposed to the transcendence of God. And yet when you put the two together, we have a God that is sovereign, supreme, huge, magnificent, almighty, and yet is close and part of our lives. We should rather consider God as Trinity, referring to three different roles by which one God continually expresses and reveals God's self to us. In other words, God simultaneously and constantly is revealing God's self as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So what does that mean? Well, it means that the God whom we worship has always been Trinity, but the revelation of God being or God's being, was only fully declared in and through Jesus Christ. If Jesus Christ is the true image of God, as stated in Colossians 1 verse 15, where Paul writes, Jesus is the image of the invisible God, then Jesus can be aptly described as God. Each person of the Godhead, however, is not a part of God, but is fully God, and completely God. In various ways through the Old Testament, the language used made it easier to come to the conclusion of Trinity. There are many examples of the Word of God as creative and revealing, and the Spirit of God. Neither Word nor the Spirit of God was considered to be an intermediary between God and the world. Both terms rather describe the action of God's self. In John's Gospel, it is thus not far-fetched that John would make the step that designates Jesus Christ as the word, Logos, of God. John 1 verse 1 can be de and can describe the Holy Spirit as another counselor. In both cases, the words describe the action of God's self, so that the ascription of fully divinity to Christ and the Holy Spirit was a natural development. Interesting that John would start his letter with the very words of Genesis 1 verse 1. This was done intentionally to strengthen the idea of Jesus being in the beginning. We know and have read that God the Father is the creator. But now John introduces us to the fact that Jesus is the word of God, the Logos. And so every time God spoke the word in Genesis, we are reminded that Jesus is present. We know that the Spirit of God was hovering over the earth. As in the beginning, we are made aware of the presence of God as Trinity. Same with Jesus' baptism. Jesus is baptized. As he comes out of that water, the Holy Spirit descends like a dove. And we hear the voice of the Father Almighty that says, This is my beloved with whom I am well pleased. The nature of this God of whom the Old Testament speaks is declared in the New Testament, and the doctrine of the Trinity is the way in which God is described by God's actions. As Father, God is the creator and sustainer of the universe. As Son, God rescues human beings from a meaningless life and redeems them from sin, thus enabling them to find their true and authentic. As Holy Spirit, God unites human beings with one another, but especially with God's self, making the love which God displayed in Jesus Christ relevant and available to them in the here and now. Briefly, we can say this. God displaying God's transcendent as Father, God's involvement and sharing in human life as Son, and God giving of life and unity to the world as Holy Spirit. These three actions of God, or ways of being, are exercised continuously and, and simultaneously. But there is one God, single originator, sustainer of the universe. The doctrine of the Trinity, therefore, is meant to explain and cl clarify the nature of God whom we serve. I do hope that this may have helped you to understand the concept of Trinity as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God as one God, yet in different, different actions and different ways of expressing God's self to us. Let us pray. Lord God, we, we thank you for today's service. We thank you for our worship. 
Lord God, we thank you for your word read to us and shared with us. A word that speaks about the fact that the word became flesh. The word dwelt among us. And we know that that is Jesus Christ. Lord God, we can acknowledge that as Father, as Creator, you have been present. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You were before anything was. And so, Lord, we acknowledge that there's a mystery around your being. We acknowledge that sometimes we struggle to grasp concepts. We sometimes struggle to grasp your love for us. And yet your love is constant and real and true. And so, Lord God, as we wrestle with the doctrine of God, the doctrine of the Trinity, may you continue to work within our hearts. May you, through the power of the Holy Spirit, bring us and give us your discernment so that we may understand more and more of who you are. Lord God, reveal yourself to us. We thank you that you are the one true God. And yet that you have revealed yourself to us as Father, as Son, as Holy Spirit. Lord, teach us and allow us to come to a deeper understanding of your revelation to us. Bless us now. Bless us in this coming week. May we continue to be Christ-like disciples in all that we say and do and think. We ask and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You were the word at the beginning, one with God, the Lord Most High. You're hidden. Sin was great to love.